Hi, I'm Dr. Elliot Adam from ElliotOracle.com. I'm also the author of the award-winning Fearless Tarot and Tarot in Love, Consulting the Cards and Matters of the Heart. Both are from Llewellyn Books and are available wherever books are sold. And I also have some signed copies available at my website, ElliotOracle.com, if you're looking for the perfect gift for the tarot lover in your life. <clears throat> and it is time now for this week's Oracle Reveal. So yesterday on YouTube and also on Instagram, I placed up a photo of three different birds this week. And I asked you to use your intuition and just ask yourself which animal or which bird is calling to you. And the birds I selected were the owl, the hawk, and the dove. So if you're just joining me now, ask yourself which animal seems to be calling to you. It doesn't have to be your favorite bird. It just has to be the one that kind of gets stuck in your head because that bird has your message. For those of you who picked the owl spirit, this card says you see clearly now. An owl is known for its sight. It can see in the dark. It can see what others cannot. And if you're attracted to owl this week, this could be a time when you want to pay attention to what you're seeing. You might also want to listen to your instincts, your inner sight, uh, when it comes to viewing a person or a situation, really consulting with what your instincts, what your deeper feelings are telling you. The owl can see other people's blind spots the things they don't uh, see very well. And this can be why the owl, mythologically speaking, is sometimes a card, or a, I'm sorry, sometimes a bird with a mixed reputation. Some people love the owl and they think it symbolizes wisdom. Other people think the owl is associated with uh, bad magic or darkness. And it's because an owl uh, can see what people don't want you to see. And that can feel unsettling sometimes for someone who's trying to kind of keep themselves in the dark about something. So again, with the owl symbolism, you want to trust what you feel. First card for owl is where it's best to place your focus this next week. And we get the world card. And the world is a card of completion, graduation, and movement. It's also a card of leveling up. And it could just indicate that you're done with an old cycle. It's time to finish it. It's time to graduate. It's time to take that step up. It might also be time to grow. Because as the world will symbolize the completion of one major life phase for you, it also foretells the beginning of something completely new or different, something expansive and open for you. And the world is the major arcana zenith. It's the last card after the fool's journey of all the hills and all the valleys. So there is a sense with the owl, it's like you're coming to the completion of a major thing that you've been working on in yourself. And now it's time to take that step across the threshold and not only complete that which has been incomplete up until now, but also open yourself up to this exciting new beginning. The second card is going to be advice from your inner wisdom. And we get the Nine of Cups. And for me, the Nine of Cups is a card of intention. It's called the Wish Card. And what it really has to do with is setting your intentions for the kind of life that you want to live, what you're really wishing for. Part of the intention that you might also have to set with that world card symbolism is the sense that it's also time to finish something that's feeling like it's on a perpetual cycle and you're just repeating and doing the same thing over and over, even though you've already mastered the lesson. The Nine of Cups could say it's time to set the table for the new and exciting uh, beginning that's ahead for you. It might also be a time to set those intentions and really get clear about what you want and be specific because what you're focusing your intentions toward is exactly what you're going to get. That's why you can see people sometimes who are just stuck in a quagmire and their you know, outlook is so negative and they're wondering, why is my life so bad and I just can't get out of it and it's always poor me. And it's really because they're just kind of in this perpetual self-fulfilling prophecy. So I just kind of feel like it's time to switch gears with the owl. It's time to look at where your opportunities are, but it's also time to look at what your wish is. What do you really desire? Where do you want to be in the next several years? It's time to graduate your old life phase and start this new beginning. And then the mythic archetype that's going to help you is Heracles or Hercules. Um, and he's the archetype of strength, but also courage. And this could be a time when you're grabbing the bull by the horns. You're really saying, okay, I'm just going to make this intention and I'm going to do it. 
Hercules can say that it's time to take action. And it's also time to rely on your inner strength. Everything you've learned in your journey up until now, it can be put to good use this next year. And so I feel like this next week is like a window where you're really looking ahead and you're asking yourself, how do I want to end the year out? And what is it that I want to affect change in in my life? It's time to roll the sleeves up and get to work. Next is going to be the Hawk Spirit, and this card says, Let Spirit Be Your Guide. And Hawk flies high above uh, in the sky and is able to see things clearly. Hawk is a messenger of the birds, and so this could be a time when you're receiving messages from your spirit. It could also be a time to commune or connect with the upper world, the higher self, and really channel that information to help you with challenges or difficulties that you might be dealing with in your your daily life. Always with that hawk, there is a sense of like distance and space and looking at things in context. So it might be a time to take a step back, take a time out and look at everything in its proper context. First card is where it's best to place your focus if you pick the hawk and we get the queen of pentacles. And most decks, even the one this uh, pagan other world's tarot, it shows that little rabbit in the bottom corner. And rabbits can mean fertility. You know, we all know about the Easter bunny and uh, springtime. Uh, But rabbits can also represent prosperity, and they can also represent anxiety. And I'm just kind of feeling with this Queen of Pentacles, it's like you're focusing on something. And what you're focused on is a really great idea. It's going to lead toward long term security or stability for you. Your head is in the right place. But that little rabbit is chattering around in your garden of your head. And it's making you anxious or worried. Is this right? Is it all going to be okay? Can I have a 100% guarantee that everything I'm investing in is going to be perfect? And there really are no guarantees, but there is the work. There is having faith in what you're accomplishing and doing. And the Queen of Pentacles has a really uh, practical solution to anxiety. And it's that she really just focuses on what's tangible, what's here, what can I work on, what can I see uh, with my eyes, what can I feel with my hands, what can I build? And instead of just kind of thinking about all the things that could go wrong or even could go right but then go wrong, uh, Queen of Pentacles is about getting to work, focusing those intentions on manifesting something. The advice from your inner wisdom, if you pick the hawk, is the Six of Wands. And this is a card of being excellent, stepping into what makes you excellent. It's also a card that says it's time to stop being afraid of shining in some way. Maybe the rabbit is your anxiety of standing out. Maybe you have this really successful pathway that you're envisioning for yourself and everything's lined up for you to succeed. But that little rabbit saying, oh, I don't want anyone to see me. Or what if so-and-so thinks this? Or what if people don't like me? And so the Six of Wands is about being confident, reaching in into your courage and embodying what makes you excellent because the cream always rises to the top. And if you're focused on what makes you excellent, things are going to fall into place. But you need to be confident and put that energy out there. And then the mythic archetype that's going to help you here is Dionysus. And he is the uh, god who invents wine. Uh, He becomes quite famous for it when he's mortal and then he becomes immortal. He gets invited to join the family of the gods because he's got this great idea called wine and it's a hit. And so this could be a time again with that six of wands energy where you're really embodying what your talent is. You're really believing in it and you're really letting that help you ascend to greater heights. Also, Dionysus is a god of ecstasy and also transcendence. So this could be a time to transcend your fears and really kind of put your focus on what your end game is, what it is that you want to ascend to. And then finally, we have the dove spirit. And this card says, be peace. And dove is that symbol for peace. But the dove is also an animal that is the intermediary between the mortal world and the spirit world. So a lot of times doves have been associated with signs or signals that might be coming from loved ones who've passed on. So this could be a week where you really want to pay attention to those little signs or signals or songs that come on the radio or things that are meant just for you where you're like, is this just me or is this something? No, this is something. This has to be something. There's something more to it. 
First card for Dove is where it's best to place your focus. And we got the Three of Pentacles, which is the card of learning and study. And I just kind of feel for the Dove, this is a wonderful week to immerse yourself in something that interests you. Might also be a time to study something that's going to help you get to the next level, either professionally or academically. Might be something that you're really focusing on that's going to pave the way towards something more secure for you in the future. But always this card says, open your mind to learning. It's never a mistake to go for more education, to learn, to grow. And so I just kind of feel like this is going to be that week to reach for knowing more. The advice from your inner wisdom, if you pick the dove, is the five of cups, which warns you not to look at the last uh, loss that you've experienced instead of the gains, not to be so in this rumination of, well, isn't that sad? That didn't work out that last time, or I really tried for that and then didn't work anyway, so I guess I won't try anymore. I just kind of feel like there's a way that's ahead for you that you can find the solution to, but you need to learn about it. You need to do some research. This could also be a time where you're not talking your yourself out of your best success. It might be a time where you're just getting real about what you don't know and really putting yourself in a position to learn those things. A lot of times the biggest breakthroughs that happen for us happen when we open our mind to learning, to growing, to getting out of our rut or our routine or the only things that we've known up until now. And the mythic archetype that's going to help you if we pick the dove is the four winds. And I just kind of feel like a new wind is blowing and you really want to just kind of follow its current. I just feel as well with the four winds uh, that this could be a time to use your mind, use your intellect, use your thoughts. With that wind, we got the element of air, which is all about thinking. And also the four winds can represent the different directions, the different spirits of the winds. You got the south wind that's very warm. You got the east wind who's uh, rather kind of, you know, nerdy. You got the north wind, uh, which is a little cold. Uh, this might be a time when you're also thinking about the west wind that's a little bit more emotional it's looking at uh, thoughts through the realm of feelings it might be applying uh, one of the winds that you've been deficient in into your thinking process about this thing so what do you need to have a little bit more of in order to learn the lesson or to grow or to get to the next level this is going to be the week that you really want to invest in that thing and that is this week's Oracle. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, please do like, and if you found the information useful, share it with a friend. Also, I appreciate all of your subscriptions and your comments in the box below. So keep those coming. I'm always interested to learn uh, what you're thinking or how uh, the Oracles apply to your day-to-day -day life. Otherwise, I hope you all have a wonderful week and I'll see you again here next time. And you can always tune in for my daily Oracles, my card of the day, every day too at Elliot Oracle. All right, so I'll see you again next week uh, with the next Animal Oracle, so take care.